See the preparation I have to put in? Hey guys, I'm going to make this quick because I've got to do some comic work. I'm still uploading yesterday's vlog, it's taking ages despite the fact that it's 7 minutes. It's ridiculous and I'm going to have to deal with uh, some phone calls to change my internet provider either today or tomorrow depending on when i got time. I've got uh, a lot to do because I've got to do the comics work, I've got some politics work that I've got to do as well and then I've got to go out to a meeting later today so that's going to be fun to watch. At the same time I have four games here that Jen bought me yesterday and I'm very very appreciative. Thank you very much Jen, I do appreciate it, I love you lots. So let's have a look at what we got. The first one up is an addition to a collection that I've uh, only got one of but there are like four or five and it's uh, World Championship Snooker 2003. It's a fun game. I remember playing Virtual Pool when uh, I was still on my... My goodness, I still had an Amstrad Mega PC at the time. Virtual Pool... Did I? Yes, the original Virtual Pool demo was on a, a tape, a demo tape, and it was intro... Tape? Oh my goodness, I know I'm retro, but my goodness, no. The original uh, Virtual Pool demo I had was uh, on a demo disc, and I'd installed that off there, and it was a lot of fun. But... Uh, I did eventually get a copy on disc and I've got an Xbox copy as well. It's over in the corner, I can't pick it up right now. But uh, I've got it on Xbox and it's a lot of fun, it's really good. Virtual Pool is probably the best uh, pool game that you can get on a computer. But uh, these ones are pretty good too and they're fun to play so I'll be enjoying that later on. Next up is a game, uh, Stealth Force The War on Terror. Now it's an FPS but it's not a very good one so naturally it's made by Midas. Yep. So I think we can put that to one side already. I tried it out and yeah, I'll probably give it another try later on because the idea of it is bad and I don't like the fact that they're essentially just making fun out of uh, attacking a bunch of poor countries. But it is a, a game and they've, they seem to have tried this time rather than just slapped something together. So we'll give it a, a try, see how it goes. Another one that feels like it could have been an awful lot better than it is is Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Now, I've got the Platinum Edition because I couldn't find the normal uh, version, but to be honest with you, I'm going for a collection. I'm not going for a collection of only black level ones or a collection of only uh, Platinum ones. I'm just going for the collection all of the titles. So I don't really mind which box it's in, as long as it's all matches. Like, the disc has to be the same as the case. I don't like uh, the idea of the, when you go into CX and sometimes they just give you a Platinum disc in a black label case or vice versa. Keep them together, guys. But anyway... It's a fun little game. It's nowhere near as what it could have been. If you ever played Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, my favourite game on the Xbox 360, then you see what Pirates of the Caribbean could have been. It's never like that. Anyway, final one that we got yesterday is a fun one. Scooby-Doo, Night of 100 Frights. Yeah, Night of 100 Frights. It's a decent quality case and it's a good game. I I'm losing my voice, it's ridiculous. I'm really not well because of uh, all the cold weather we've been, been having. But each of these has a manual. But the Scooby-Doo one is fun. It's kind of got the spirit of the old cartoon, so I'm really happy with that one. And I'll be looking forward to giving it a try at another time. But anyway, now I'm rushing because I have to get on with today's comics before I get everything else done. So I'm going to get on with that now. Hopefully by the time that uh, I finish the comics, the vlog will be up and I'll be able to upload the comics and it won't be a delay and a problem. But we'll have to wait and see how it goes.
guys, there's the first of the comics done. I was hoping to do two of them today, but unfortunately I'm running out of time, so I've got to go out this evening, you see, to a community issue, and uh, that's going to take up a fair amount of my time this evening, so I haven't got time to do you know, the comic. However, I do have about an hour, so I've been working on these old family photographs from Jen's side the family. Jen's dad got them out of a, an archive of uh, turn of the century and up to about 1940 photos and I've been uh, working on them, uh, removing d dust and scratches, removing damage to the photo, t touching it up basically to improve the contrast and getting as much uh, image quality out of them as I can. In some cases that's actually quite difficult but uh, this one worked out quite well so I'm actually quite pleased with it. Anyway, now I've got to get ready because I've got to go out. I've got such a headache and um, I've got to head out even, even though I feel ill because this is uh, something that's really important. It's a community issue that has to be addressed. And also I'm addressing the issue that uh, a couple of, well, three councillors in the area have pretty much just written a hit job on a local MP and uh, suggesting things that are demonstrably untrue. So I've got to confront them about that. It's it's all a mess. Anyway, got to go and do that. See you later. Okay, so here's the thing. I went out to this event tonight. It was supposed to be uh, a discussion about uh, building uh, plans and things like that, the spatial framework and things like that. And I knew it was going to be a problem because the guy that's uh, been put in his chair, uh, after I was asked to, and then all of a sudden I get a phone call saying, can you not? The guy that's put in his chair is a member of the cabinet for the Labour group in Bolton. So he's a member of Bolton uh, Council's cabinet. And that's, I can't see a way for him to be a member of the cabinet and a, the chair of a pressure group going against something that this cabinet is with. It seems like a massive conflict of interest to me. And uh, for someone to stand up and say that this guy's the most qualified person, I think, no, you're getting it wrong. He's going to cause you problems because it's a conflict of interest. So it's going to cause you problems, but I have this horrible feeling that it's not going to work out. Anyway, this guy stood up and did a political rant and uh, an anti-government rant, essentially. Which I filmed. This discrepancy leaves a big hole in our housing allocation, which can't be ignored for too long. Changing government planning policy have made this task more difficult. In 2012, the sequential test was removed. And then they said, oh, it's not a political thing. So all of these complaints that uh, he's been a cabinet member, well, we're not a political organisation, so this isn't a political thing. He's just made a grumpy government rant. And then the next person who stands up, the person they've brought to speak, goes on an, a rant saying that uh, councillors don't care about people. I think, what's going on? This was ridiculous. So anyway, I left in protest at that point. There's, there's no way I can stand around and uh, buy my presents. Uh, sensibly say, yeah, this is okay, so I had to leave. Oh. So that that was it. I knew it was going to be a bit of a problem tonight, but I didn't realise it was going to be that much of a problem. Yeah.